Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. Title IX was originally designed to stop sex-based discrimination. It banned discrimination on the basis of sex, which at that point, everybody knew meant being male or female. And women and girls made serious progress in sports, in education, in going on to higher education. And it really made a difference for how women and girls participated in the education process. But now the Department of Education wants to redefine sex in Title IX to include sexual orientation, gender identity, and they also have added pregnancy or pregnancy-related conditions, which is kind of an interesting little twist. Hmm. For the left, pregnancy-related conditions includes abortion. So it could possibly mean that schools would have to teach children about abortion or maybe even provide them with access to abortion or with resources like point them towards Planned Parenthood. If they don't do that, that could be considered sex discrimination under this redefinition. So it's a really radical redefinition of what sex, being male or female, really means. Wow. And it wouldn't surprise me if that was the direction they go in. I know that this was mentioned and there was even a period for the public to comment earlier in the summer. Do you know when the new policies take effect? Well, this started on the first day of Biden's administration. He signed an executive order telling every single federal agency to include sexual orientation and gender identity in their non-discrimination policies. So we've been seeing this across every federal agency from Health and Human Services to now the Department of Education. So in June, the Biden administration released another executive order, basically doubling down on the first one. And it was earlier this year that the Department of Education said, okay, we're going to redefine sex to mean this. And then they have to go into a comment period. Well, there were hundreds of thousands of people who commented mostly against the redefinition of sex. A lot of conservative and Christian organizations worked together. They were able to rally the troops and hundreds of thousands of people responded. So by law, the Department of Education has to respond to the questions that are asked and to the comments that are made. So this is kind of a lengthy process. And in effect, the Department of Education is basically making the law. They're creating law, which is not their job. That's Congress's job to do. And so this will probably bring about some lawsuits from state's attorney general, maybe from some school districts and some religious groups. It's going to be a long process, but they're definitely moving that direction. They want to push schools to teach about sexual orientation and gender identity and to include that in their non-discrimination policies. And if schools don't, they might be subject to lawsuits or they might lose federal funding. Yeah, and we saw it tied with the start of school to milk funding or lunch funding. Yeah, that was through the Department of Agriculture, oddly enough, because they fund school breakfasts and school lunches. And they were tying that funding to schools having policies in place that protect sexual orientation and gender identity. So that was one push from that agency. Now we're getting a second push from the Department of Education. And this will have a radical effect on a a lot of different areas of education. First of all, schools would be forced to teach about LGBT issues. They'd be forced to teach kindergartners about sexual orientation and gender identity. There are some states where that's already the case, but this would be a national push to have that. Girls would have to share their private spaces, restrooms, showers, and locker rooms with boys who claim to be girls. And then women's sports would also be intruded upon as boys who claim to be girls. The schools would have to let those boys onto the team. That's what this Department of Education mandate would mean. I keep seeing the stories about the teacher shortages, and I think, is this how education is going to change in our nation? Is there going to be a ramping up of Christian schools because people just don't want their kid to be in the public school with this just because they don't feel that they're safe? How can we be proactive in the midst of all of this, Jeff? We can pray that God will stop this. And then, as you mentioned, a lot of parents are moving towards other ways of educating their children besides public schools. We saw this already with COVID. There was a huge increase in homeschooling, 
and in applications to Christian schools and charter schools and private schools. Now, the Department of Education will try to put this on those schools as well. So parents need to be aware that even if their kids are in a private school or a Christian school, the DOE will still be pushing these policies. So that's another thing that parents and grandparents, too, uh, can do is be aware of what's happening in your own child's school. We're seeing all kinds of sexual issues being pushed on children through comprehensive sex ed, through social studies lessons that teach about LGBT-identified people, through books in classrooms and libraries. So it's really, really important for parents to be aware of what's happening. And then also parents and grandparents and Sunday school teachers, we need to give our children a solid foundation of God's design for sexuality. We know from the Bible that God made two sexes, male and female, and they were made to complement each other and to work together. But, and we don't just know that from the Bible. We know that from science, too. Humans are sexually dimorphic. We come in two different kinds, male and female, and individuals are one or the other. And so we can give our children a very solid base, a solid foundation where they understand what science says and God's good design. And then when they encounter these issues, because they will, they won't be caught off track by them. We need to teach them what marriage is, that God designed marriage to be between a husband and wife, and that that's the best place to raise children. The church needs to be part of training children to have a solid foundation on these issues. 